Well, it's May the 10th, and that's the easy part of this particular job over with. My compost for planting in and the composted cow manure have been delivered. Now it's a matter of moving those huge sacks all over the property for the various uses. First is going to be right here on this little deck where I'm standing. I acquired this from Costco online. I really like it. I wish they, they were on sale when I bought this one. And I only bought one because I didn't know what it would be like. I wished I'd bought two more. I could use three here on this little deck. Nice high elevated bed. So somebody with arthritic knees like I've got doesn't have to get down on their hands and knees. Amazing construction. Uh, it came in, I counted the pieces, 13 pieces. No tools required to assemble it. And I thought, yeah, right. They were right. It just all went together, tongue and groove. These sideboards here fit tongue and groove into the posts, and the uh, boards on the inside are just laying there. They don't have to be nailed down to anything at all. There's a liner that goes over them so that soil won't sift down through the cracks. Uh, the only thing that I did, these little caps on the corner posts, um, just have dowels. That uh, two dowels that were pre drilled to go down into the post, and I thought, well, with the wind we get, that will blow away. So I did use wood glue to hold those down, but other than that, no tool required. It's cedar, you can see the name of the company called Cedar Craft, and uh, the little brochure that came with it is it's all what they're calling rescued cedar, it's the off cuts from a, a mill that uses cedar for some sort of construction and they have taken the little pieces that are only eight or ten inches long and uh, the use of whatever you call that machine that does that put them all together the corner posts are the same way they're put together out of small pieces so really a nice little unit i'm looking forward to planting it and that's what i'll be doing first i guess with some of my garden soil to give you some idea, I guess, of what I plan to grow in here, it's going to be mostly uh, salad items and a few herbs. Uh, I bought a six pack of Italian flat leaf parsley, looking a bit straggly because I've been clipping off of it and using it. Besides, I just watered it a few minutes ago, I guess. But uh, I'm going to put a couple of them in here now. I'm not sure. They haven't been hardened off, so I'm only going to risk a couple of them. All I ever want in here is two. But I'll have four more to go by if I kill those. And this is curly chervil, uh, which I'm not putting out yet. It's kind of back in the house. Yeah, I think our nights are still too cool for that. It's pretty delicate. And a tiny Tim tomato. A really tiny, tiny Tim tomato. They didn't really want to sell it to me at the garden center. Um, they're, everything there is geared to, for the big startup of our gardening season, the 1st of June. So. By the time the 1st of June came around, this in the garden center, in the, in the greenhouses and whatever, it would have been a decent sized plant, but that's all right. It's got coming out here for another two or three weeks either. And if you don't know what Tiny Tim is, it's a, by its name, you can tell it's small, I guess. It is a small cherry tomato, but also the plant is a very compact, sturdy little plant. I haven't grown them in years, but I thought in a container like this, or a raised bed, where it might get some wind or whatever, not to, it would be a good plant to, to grow. I'm not sure if it says on here how tall you can expect it to get. Uh, yeah, two feet, 24 inches, 61 centimeters tall, and that's pretty much optimum. I doubt if it ever gets that tall, but it gives you an idea of what the ideal one would look like there, I guess, but that would be going in the center here eventually. Right now I'm going to put in a couple of these uh, Italian flat leaf parsleys. In my previous video I talked about the potting mix garden soil bags, whatever you want to call it, that I, I wouldn't take because of the labeling that said that <laughs> recommended that you not handle it in your bare hands. And, well, I'm growing vegetables in it. I don't want anything that I can't handle in my bare hands. This is not organic either, and I knew that when I bought it. Um, 
it has I can I can't see any right here on the surface but it has a small amount of slow release fertilizer one bag is 21 kilograms I used a bag in here and I used a bag of the composted cow manure that's 15 kilograms so they're they're both in this in this planter it should be a pretty rich mixture I think and these are just a very standard cheap seeds radishes one row of radish, I guess. Planted kind of thickly, but I don't know what the quality of the seeds are. So. I always thin them. Famous last words, I don't and don't get good radish here. Try to remember to thin them this time. And over on this side, I put a row of the hybrid Japanese uh, turnip that, it, from what I have read, will grow best in the spring and the fall. Our problem here is we have about three days of spring and then it goes into hot summer weather. So I will plant a few and if I don't get anything out of these, I'll save the rest of the seed and plant them in the fall. And things are more predictable, I guess. But the name is Hakuri, H-A-K-U-R-E-I. It's, it's an F1 hybrid. Roosters are sending forth very well down back. A little while ago, they made so much noise I couldn't record because you never would have been able to hear me. I just let the coop with the roosters in it, just let them outside. So I guess that's probably the reason. And I don't know if it's too hot here or not to try to grow a couple of uh, lettuce, but I'm going to put in at least two of the Salanova lettuce. I have two varieties, so I'll put in one up here in this location. One is called oak leaf and the other is called uh, incised. The oak leaf grew, grew very well under lights and the incised didn't do so well. So I'm hoping they'll do better outside, I guess. Okay, that's it for planting it today. Some of the other things I will transplant out here later on. Next, dropped a whole batch of radish seeds here, and a clump of radish coming up. I just water that in with my blue bandaged Hawes watering can. <laughs> I have a whole collection of derelict watering cans. This seems to have something that's plugging it and tilting it back and forth. Well, we'll see what happens here in a few days time I guess. The containers that I talked about planted. I'm quite sure they're 35 liters. Uh, the one in the center has one uh, Charlotte potato from Brendan and two small uh, Cara potatoes that I saved myself from last year. And then the four around the outside there is one that has Linzer Delicatess, one that has the Cara that Brendan sent me, one that has the Charlotte that Brendan sent me, and one of Nicola. So, they're just on an old tarp. But, uh, I've seen better days. I plan to also grow my summer squash, uh, zucchini and yellow summer squash and that sort of thing, in containers, probably smart pots, but they will join these eventually, so that's why there's so much space in between them. 
Anyway, they're in the ground. We just have to wait for them to come up and start growing, I guess. Well, another day later, it's now the 11th. I have moved some of the bags of soil and manure out to the uh, garden area where my hoop house is. I don't know if you can see part of the hoop house in that shot or not. And I'm about to plant seeds in little pots here and just put them in the hoop house to to grow. Um, it's not going below freezing at night anymore. It was four degrees last night, which is not terribly warm, but uh, it's already warmed up to about 15 and it's 10 a.m. So it'll be quite warm in the hoop house. I won't make you watch me pop seeds into all of these little modules. I'll, I'll bring you back and show you the things in the end that I have, uh, have started. This particular seed it's a squash or an edible gourd. If I can get it so you can get a look at it there. It's a strange shaped little thing. I guess I'll plant it sideways because I don't have any idea which which way is up, so to speak. But they are seeds that were sent to me by one of my subscribers, Eric uh, Morabito. Morabito? Morabito, perhaps, Eric. I'm not quite sure. But it is the Sicilian cuckoos. I've seen other gardeners grow it online on YouTube. I've never tried it myself. Uh, in Italian, it's called Serpent de Sicilia, uh, Serpent of Sicily. And if it's grown on a trellis, it will grow a long, straight squash. Well, there's that tray finished, and when I take it in the hoop house, I'll water them in. The only thing that I've done differently that I didn't show with the, doing the cuckoos here is I've, I've now decided to put two seeds in each pot. And my luck, they'll both come up and I'll have to kill one. I hate doing that, but I'd like to get four of each of these varieties. So I've, I've doubled up on the seeds. Uh, let's see, 18 is Waltham Butternut Squash. 17 is Elegant Zucchini. 25 is a new word in my vocabulary. Uh, Cavilli Hybrid Summer Squash, but it is Parthenocarpic. Uh, and that just simply means that uh, it only produces female blossoms and doesn't need a male blossom to produce a squash. I didn't realize there was such a thing in a summer squash, um, sort of a zucchini variety. I'm also growing a tomato variety that's pathenocarpic. And I think that's about it for those things there. As I say, there are more things that I'm going to be starting. Uh, Gypsy broccoli, Caraflex cabbage, red hot cabbage, Veronica cauliflower, brilliant cel celeriac, and so on. I, I won't be doing individual pots with one seed in those small seeds. I will just uh, start a number of them in a pot and then uh, break them out and, and put them into individual pots after they get started. So that is that little chore started this morning anyway. Well, there's that task finished, I guess, for this morning. It's almost lunchtime. Uh, these four trays that are modules, um, the two on the left have dwarf sunflowers, a variety of different colors of dwarf sunflowers that will grow two to four feet tall, but not those giant things. We have so much wind here that I don't like to grow anything that's terribly tall. And this is over here has been finished off. The all the ones in the tree at the back there are individual. They have a couple of seeds each. Uh, in this front tray, the well, five or six pots that you can see that look kind of dry on top and have perlite, uh, those are the pots that have multiple seeds in them, different kinds of cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, celeriac, that sort of thing. I sprinkled the seed on top of the damp soil. I'd already wet the soil and then I covered it with uh, a very fine seed starting mix rather than bury it with this heavy stuff. I didn't think it would ever come up again. And the other ones have uh, well, probably a couple, three seeds in each, different kinds of cucumbers and my oka melons and that sort of thing. You see this little contraption here, two pieces of wood stood up like a little teepee. Uh, that's got the remote sensor for the uh, little weather station that's in the cabin and the, that weather station will give me a minimum and maximum temperature for every day. 
so I will be able to monitor how cool it gets in here at night and how hot it gets in the daytime. Well, I think the heat in the daytime is still relative. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, you know, the pieces of wood probably heat up in the sun and it's actually hotter than the air temperature in here. But we'll go up to the cabin now and have a look at what it is saying right now anyway. Well, hopefully you can read that. It's saying that this is the outdoor temperature on this side and it's saying that it's 30 degrees Celsius in there, which is, I don't know, something like 80, I think, Fahrenheit, I'm not quite sure. Relative humidity in there is 53%, which is good. And in the cabin here, it's 16 degrees and 59% relative humidity. Um, I don't know, the actual outdoor temperature is probably between 15 and 20 right now. It's a, it's a lovely sunny day and we're supposed to have two or three of these in the row before of course it starts raining on the weekend. But I'm retired so every day is a weekend. It doesn't really matter to me but I feel sorry for those that worked all week and then have a rainy weekend. I don't think it's supposed to be heavy rain but it's supposed to be overcast and raining. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is bring out one pepper and one tomato plant and uh, put them in the grow bags, the uh, smart pots, and uh, see how they do in the cabin. They're sort of the, in the cabin, right, in the hoop house. They're sort of the sacrificial lamb. I do that every year to see whether or not they survive for a few days before I move everything else out. And I prefer to put everything in there on cloudy, overcast days, and Saturday and Sunday and part of Monday, that's what it's supposed to be. So if these survive the nights through to Saturday, I will probably put the rest of them out on Saturday, because these have not been hardened off at all. Uh, and if you put them in the hoopos in the bright light, they would just shrivel up and die, more than likely. I'm going to cover these ones with a, a shade made out of... Um, fleece, or row cover, whatever you want to call it, so uh, to keep the direct sun off of them, not so much to warm things up anymore, but anyway, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Well, there are the sacrificial lambs out. The tomato plant is one of Halvor's yellow Mennonite, an indeterminate variety, so it grows quite tall and will need to be staked. I normally don't have great luck, and I don't know if I had great luck last year with the yellow Mennonite, but what it did grow were enormous tomatoes and very tasty. Uh, one slice covered a whole slice of bread to make a sandwich, that sort of size tomato. So I'm going to grow several of them this year because they're so good. And the pepper plant that I chose to bring out is a Thai chili. No blossoms on it yet. Thai chilies take quite a while to grow before they start blossoming. These, all of my chilies and peppers were planted on New Year's Day. And I was so surprised when I knocked that out of the pot, it's not at all root bound. And I lay that to following Nora's instructions and, and using uh, a weak solution of hydroponic fertilizer uh, every time I watered. I, I have three different kinds of, my system for hydroponics was three different kinds of solutions and I take a 10 cc syringe of each and put it in about three or four gallons of water and watered with that all winter. Plants grew beautifully and they didn't, they're not at all root bound so that's, and they were just in like four inch pots so that worked out quite well. If you can see the uh, canes there, pieces of bamboo cane around, I'm going to drape it with spun bonded row cover not to keep the heat in but to keep the direct sun off of them because they haven't been hardened off at all so we'll see how this works in two or three days time well this bed which I've just spent an hour or two working on was just like these other three beds in this area this area is behind a, a low fence I can step over the fence with some difficulty now with arthritis, but I can step over the fence. It's just to keep rabbits out. I plant crops in here that the uh, rabbits, wild rabbits, seem to like to eat. And so far, I can get you down here for a look at some of these things. So far what I have done is transplanted the things from my winter sowing, which didn't amount to a lot. Uh, I'm fairly pleased with it. In the bottles, if you saw my video earlier, I uh, only put like three or four seeds in each bottle and some I didn't get any germination at all. The celeriac 
and the uh, Caroflex. Caroflex is a very early cabbage. None of those germinated. The other bottles all had some germination, and the one that you're closest to there is the Dead on Cabbage, which is a Savoy, a red Savoy cabbage. Uh, further up, which you may or may not be able to see, is Red Hawk cabbage, just a red cabbage. And uh, beyond that is just one of the Hikori uh, Japanese white turnips. And the very top item up there is, let me see it on my list here, the Veronica cauliflower. That's that very fancy cauliflower. I've also seen it called broccoli, uh, depending on who's selling the seed, I guess. But one very healthy looking seedling there. And there were three of these, uh, which are gypsy broccoli. So I have three broccoli plants. The white powder that you see is dipel, uh, which is a biological insecticide, um, organic, I guess you would have to call it product, no chemical involved anyway. It's a concentration of Bacillus thermogensis. I have used Bacillus thermogensis for years, but in a, a kind that you mixed with water and sprayed. But last year I saw uh, Picker Rick on his channel, if you follow Rick, using Dipel, and I didn't realize that it came in a powder. There was no mixing required. I'm going to use that this year. And I don't know if there's any danger yet of cabbage moths being out, but I despise the things and I'm not going to take the chance. Well, that will finish this video. Uh, it's getting long enough as it is, so I will post this one. Uh, today being the 11th, I guess, of May, but it won't come out until, oh, I don't know, around the 20th or something like that because there's, there's one already up there that's coming out this weekend but anyway i don't want them to get over a half hour if i can help it so thank you very much for watching